Today we discuss the cardiac cycle. First, some key concepts to understand related to the cardiac cycle. Know the term systole and diastole. Systole is contraction of the chambers. The atria contracts slightly before the ventricles. So atrial systole is followed by ventricular systole. Using the term systole alone, without the adjectives atrial or ventricular, it is understood that we are referring to ventricular systole. Diastole is relaxation of the heart. Again, using the term diastole alone refers to ventricular diastole. Also know that blood flows from chamber to chamber or from chamber to vessel due to pressure differences. Blood will only flow from high pressure to low pressure. And valves ensure proper direction of blood flow, allowing flow in only one direction. For example, blood flows from the atria to the ventricles or from the ventricles to the big vessels and not vice versa. Let's begin our analysis of the cardiac cycle at systole, which is after the ventricle has filled during diastole and the ventricles begin to contract. The first period of systole is called systole isovolumic contraction. As systole begins, pressure builds inside the ventricle, causing ventricular pressure to exceed atrial pressure. This causes the atrial ventricular valves to close. Closing of the AV valves is the first heart sound. The semilunar valves are still closed because ventricular pressure hasn't built high enough yet to exceed aortic pressure. Pressure is increasing during this period, but ventricular volume is not changing because blood can't enter or exit the ventricle due to all the valves being closed. Next is systole ejection. Once the pressures in the ventricles exceeds that of the aorta and pulmonary trunk, the semilunar valves open and the blood is ejected from the ventricles into the aorta and pulmonary trunk the valves are closed during this period and prevent blood from flowing back into the atria. The first period of diastole is called di diastole isovolumic relaxation. And pressure starts to drop rapidly because the ventricle is no longer contracting. And ventricular pressure drops below aortic pressure, resulting in the closing of the semilunar valves. The closing of the semilunar valves is what causes the second heart sound. Since ventricular pressure is still greater than atrial pressure, the atrial ventricular valves remain closed. Next is diastole rapid inflow. This phase be begins when the AV valves open, shortly after beginning diastole, and lasts approximately the first one-third of diastole. The semilunar valves are closed during this phase because pressure is higher in the aorta and pulmonary trunk compared to the ventricles. During this phase, the ventricles rapidly fill with blood. This filling is passive, meaning that the blood returning to the heart is merely running through the atrium and directly into the ventricle. During this phase, the ventricles fill to about 70 to 80% capacity. Next is diastole diastasis. During this second one-third of diastole, there is very little change in ventricular volume, and semilunar valves are still closed, and AV valves are still open. Diastole atrial systole is the final one-third of diastole, semilunar valves are still closed, and AV valves are still open. During this phase, the atria contract, adding the final 20 to 30 percent of the ventricular volume. At rest, this topping off of the ventricles is of little significance, but when we begin to exert ourselves, it becomes much more important. Now the cycle is complete and starts over again. Now for a graphical representation of pressure and volume changes that take place in the heart pumping during the cardiac cycle. Notice the labels at the top of the diagram are the six phases of the cardiac cycle we just discussed. Remember that the first two phases shown are part of systole and the following four phases are part of diastole. Vertical lines show when these phases begin and end. Note that diastole composes about two-thirds of the cycle and systole about one-third. The top panel of the image shows changes in pressure expressed as millimeters of mercury during the cycle. The three curves on the top of the panel show aortic pressure changes, atrial pressure changes, and ventricular pressure changes. These pressures are associated with the left side of the heart. If they were shown for the right side, the shapes of the curves would be similar, but maximum pressures would be much lower, only about 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury. The middle of the figure shows volume changes in the left ventricle. 
The two other lines at the bottom show when various waves of the electrocardiogram appear with respect to the cycle and when various heart sounds occur. Notice that this figure represents more than one cycle, reinforcing the idea that the cycles are occurring respectively with the new cycle beginning as soon as the previous cycle ends. This shows the details of each phase of the cardiac cycle juxtaposed to the graph. At the beginning of systole isovolumic contraction, the ventricle starts to contract, causing pressure in the ventricle to exceed atrial pressure, which closes the mitral valve. The aortic valve opening marks the end of systole isovolumic contraction and the beginning of systole ejection. And this aortic valve opens because ventricular pressure exceeds aortic pressure. The aortic valve closes at the end of systole ejection and the beginning of diastole isovolumic relaxation. This is due to aortic pressure exceeding ventricular pressure. Also note that the notch in the pressure curve of the aorta, this notch is called the dichrotic notch and is due to pressure exerted on the wall of the aorta due to sudden closure of the aortic valve. The mitral valve opening marks the end of diastole isovolumic relaxation and the beginning of diastole rapid inflow and is due to atrial pressure exceeding ventricular pressure. Notice how the volume of blood inside the ventricle fluctuates during the cardiac cycle. It makes sense that the volume is lowest after systole ejection and highest after diastole atrial systole. Also note that the P wave of the electrocardiogram represents atrial depolarization and happens just before atrial systole. Depolarization of the ventricles happens during the QRS complex and ventricular systole happens just after this. The mechanical event, contraction, is preceded by the electrical event, which is depolarization. The first and second heart sounds occur due to closure of valves. The first heart sound is from closure of the AV valves and the second heart sound is from closure of the semilunar valves. The third heart sound doesn't always occur, but is due to turbulent blood flow rushing into the ventricles near the end of the first one-third of diastole. Make sure to study which valves are open at each phase of the cycle, remembering that valves open and closed based on pressure differences on each side of the valve. Please remember that pressure differences between the left atria and left ventricle cause AV valves to close or open and that pressure differences between the left ventricle and aorta cause aortic semilunar valves to open or close. Now for review questions. Pause the video and consider your answers. If you chose the following, you are correct. If you chose the following, you are correct. If you chose the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.